Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Now, you're welcome. Please use the chat box as you join. Let me know who is, who is um, online. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. I am Awa Umar, lawyer Rob Blaine, and today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic. Yeah, assalamualaikum. Oh, the network is really bad. The network is bad, but I'll just go ahead and hope that others will join me as we go. So um, we don't give it the cognizance it, it deserves. And um, this is because we feel like we have to push our body, push ourselves, even when our body tells us it's not ready to go ahead with whatever it is we are doing. But I want us to understand that we should always try to prioritize our body first. As women, we need to learn how to rest. We need to learn how to rest because this has a lot of complications. If it's not um, an immediate complication, sometimes it could be a futuristic complication. So um, hormones, let me, let's just talk a little about hormones. Hormones are important for every bodily functions. They are the chemical messengers that coordinate the many different metabolic processes that take place in the body throughout the day. And they exist within... Um, Sister Moawiya, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> nice to have you here. It is actually her. Okay, so um, when you get stressed, the hormone that increases as a result is cortisol. I don't know if any of us have ever heard of the hormone cortisol. So cortisol is the hormone that is responsible for regulating our stress hormone. Either it goes down or it goes up. So cortisol is basically a survival hormone. And it takes precedence over all other hormones in stress, um, stressful situations. When cortisol undergoes an abnormal increase through extreme stress, all other bodily processes are compromised. The body goes into a fight or flight mode which means that all of the energy goes into supporting cortisol while other hormones are put on the side. Now, basically what I'm trying to say is that when you are extremely stressed, your body will prioritize its survival mode. It will, let you to, it will basically decide that, okay, every other function is not necessary. For example, it considers me uh, menstruating as, it considers menstruating as um, secondary, and it also considers um, fertility, you getting pregnant. Of course, the hormone progesterone, trying to thicken the lining of the uterus for concep conception or implantation to take place. It would take that as a secondary function. And then it will prioritize the primary function of you trying to survive. So that's why you see that women who are highly stressed are very aggressive, especially the market women. If you've ever come across a market woman who was up as at 3 a.m., went to the market, bought something, she didn't even sleep. Sometimes as at 1 p.m., she has not even had breakfast. And then you come and you price something she's selling for. Maybe she told you the thing was 300 and you now, you now made a mistake and you priced it for 15 naira. Of course, she'll back at you because she's already ready to fight. She's stressed. She's she's highly stressed so um we should really i i want us to really take the um to take it important the impact of stress in our life as women we are made to sleep wake up eat do a little exercise rest do more we, we as women we are made to really function as more of a thinking and planning being we are not made to jump up and down, go all over the place and, you know, try to put everything in place. So sometimes some women take the, the job of, their, um, of the husband in the home. They are there to take care of the responsibilities and these have emotional impacts. They have health implications in the body system. So we really need to understand that stress is our enemy and stress is something we need to fight against. However you can do it, I'll implore us to take stress as something that, it, that is very, 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 very damaging to the body system. I'm using the word very damaging, extremely damaging to the female reproductive system. And even if you are not, um, you, are, you feel like you've conceived, you don't have to have a child anymore. 
um, subsequently, especially when you're getting into menopause, it makes the symptoms of menopause aggravated. It increases it times two times three. So where you're supposed to have night flashes on the minimal, you, in fact, there are so many who don't even experience night flashes because they are so healthy. Their hormones are balanced. So they get to be very okay. Now, um, I would like us to also go into, so when your body prioritizes your stress, your stress hormones, it prioritizes survival, and then it basically shuts down every other type of hormone. Please, um, can you all hear me? Is it clear? Hello, is it clear? I want to know if I'm talking to myself or... Oh. Because I know it's quite noisy where I am, but I'm just basically trying to keep to my promise of um, doing this life. I shouldn't be here, but I just have to do it. Okay, Beans Anis. Okay, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Now, Alhamdulillah. So, um... Can you, have you all understood how much stress is? You know, I explained in the first, I don't know if any of you here are were in the first life class. I talked about the importance of the hormone, the progesterone hormone, in helping to thicken the lining of the, the endometrium. So this helps implantation to take place. And it usually happens from the 14th day of your menstrual cycle to the last day. You know, the progesterone, the level of the progesterone is really, really imp important. This sustains your implantation. Now, when your body is stressed, it is very difficult for implantation to take place. Also, when you are stressed, you would not produce LD eggs. These LD eggs will become unhealthy, and then it makes fertilization with the sperm cells difficult too. So it also goes out as a miscarriage. I promise to um, record a video teaching us all on how to detox with aloe vera and um, aloe vera, the mountainous aloe vera and moringa leaves. But the issue there is that I have not been able to do that video. So I'm going to just talk about it here and hope that others can refer to it. So now that's um, mountainous aloe vera. Whenever you're opportune to get an, a mountainous aloe vera, if you're able to get it at all, if you can't get the mountainous one, you can use any type of aloe vera, it's fine. Just get the aloe vera, cut it, do not peel the green parts. Use the green parts with it, dice it, but when you're cutting the aloe vera, make sure there's a there's a um, an extract that secretes from the aloe vera. It's um, called the, um, the linoic and it's quite dangerous. So I would, I would um, advise you don't take that part it, with it, don't ingest it. So what you basically do is cut your aloe vera, aloe vera into pieces, dice it, add it to a blender. Then the best moringa to use, I'm going to, I've already done that video, but I was waiting to complete the entire video. But basically what you can just do is cut an, um, moringa leaves, add it to your blender, then add coconut water. There's this water that is usually present in the coconuts. That water is very, very good for detoxification. It's alkaline in nature. So it is very healthy. So add the coconut water, add aloe vera, add moringa. Now the prescribed measure, measurements, be even la, may Allah help me, I am going to do that video. So you, are, um, you add everything to your blender. You blend this until it is smooth. Blend, on, blend until it's smooth, and then you drink on an empty stomach. So it depends on how chronic your case is. If you have a very serious case, because I've had chats, I've had people asking me questions about PCOS, fibroid, tubal blockage. Be even like I am 100% sure by Allah's Rahmah, if you are consistent with this recipe twice daily, at least two months, all types of infection, all types of tubal blockage will be cleansed out of your body system. 
all type of blockage, all type of um, infection, if be it um, staphylococcus, um, trichomonas, virginitis, you know, all type of infection. Then also fibroids, it helps to shrink fibroids. Aloe vera is very, very, very medicinal properties. It has a lot of medicinal properties. So aloe vera is very, very good, but it would really help you. I'll very well help you to detox it to heal your gut lining because of the mucilaginous uh, mucilaginous um, nature of it. It's quite um, thick and it's stretchy. So that stretchy nature of aloe vera, that thick gel-like consistency aloe vera has, helps to heal the gut lining, and it aids detoxification too. Then uh, moringa is also okay. Um, to, I would I recommend you drink the second dosage will be before you go to bed beans anise i recommend you take it this um before you go to bed after dinner now the reason for taking it after dinner before you go to bed is because when you are using these two um these two um herbs in combination they are known to be research, research has shown that they are very powerful for reducing the blood sugar levels and they help um, to reduce and um, to cure glucose, the glucose level, the blood sugar levels, and also diabetics. Anybody who is who is pre-diabetic or who is even suffering from type two diabetes, if you are on this recipe, be eating like going to, it's going to really help you. And why diabetes? Why I'm talking about the blood glucose level? Why this recipe for somebody suffering hormonal imbalance? Is because insulin has been known to cause hormonal imbalance. When your insulin levels are too high or your body cannot absorb insulin, it becomes a problem and then this disrupts your hormones. So what I would recommend is that you take this um, in the morning on an empty stomach, but I'm going to add two more recipes to this. You take um, the aloe vera blend in the morning on an empty stomach, 30 minutes before bed at night, after dinner, you take it because this would help your liver work function but better also um now this when you wake up if you have if you are insulin resistant if you are battling with your insulin levels or hormonal levels you tend to wake up with a sometimes your sugar levels may drop depending on what type of herbs you are using so now when you have low sugar levels in the morning you may feel irritated you may wake up feeling inactive, you may wake up feeling foggy, you may wake up feeling um, depressed and, you know, cranky. So what I would recommend is use the sonatic method, and that is only water. The Rasul Sassam says that it is only the intelligent person that knows the benefits of only water on an empty stomach. Ibn Qayyim al Jazi says you shouldn't use it with warm water. You should just use room temperature water, add your honey to it, and then you drink it on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. So then during the day, if you are using this aloe vera and um, moringa leaves as a recipe to heal your hormones, heat fertility, heal diabetes, um, increase your insulin resistance or balance your insulin levels, um, it also works for blood sugar, it works for cholesterol, it works for fat tummy, it works for um, weight metabolic, low slow metabolism. You know, when you, some people say they've tried to lose weight, they've done all they can and still the weight loss is a problem. So what I would recommend is that this recipe be on it. But like I mentioned in my last um, live session, when you're on this recipe, Starakia, you're welcome. Please, if you know that you're getting value from what I've said, what I'm saying so far, please like this video, like what I'm saying, like the chat, and use um Found Saturday. I mean, you're welcome. Walikum Sam Slavaka to give me a thumbs up and share the link because the live session would end soon. But I'm just trying to make it as um to fulfill some of my promises. So um when you are on this recipe of uh, mountainous aloe vera and moringa leaves, my recommendation is that date should also be your best friend. Now, do not go above three dates in a day. Stalatifa, they go, okay, you're welcome. So do not go above three dates in a day. 
Now, so I'm going to list how you be on this recipe. Can we have a scribe? Can somebody chat, type this on the chat box as I'm saying it so that whoever comes in may find this in the chat box. Now I'll start the recipe, the recipe again as you should use it. When you wake up in the morning, first thing in the morning, follow the soon now of drinking only water. As somebody some suffering from hormonal imbalance, do not use hot water. Even Koyim says we should use room temperature water. So add a tablespoon of honey to a glass cup of room temperature water. Stir it consistently until you are sure that your honey has mixed proper, properly with your water. Now, if you are using pure honey, it takes a while for honey to mix properly with water. That's another feature of um, pure honey. Fake honey dilutes quickly. But pure honey takes a while because it sticks to the bottom of the pot uh, of your cup. So you mix very well. You mix very well and then you drink that. So 30 minutes after um, drinking your honey water. Thank you. Thank you very much. So 30 minutes, just press the like button or press your press the like button. Starlati file. Yeah, thank you so much. The false uh, false. Thank you. So what you would just do is 30 minutes after taking your honey water, then you blend your aloe vera and your moringa leaves, fresh moringa leaves, if you can find fresh moringa leaves. But if you cannot find fresh moringa leaves, I recommend you use moringa powder. Go for organic moringa, moringa um, powder. If you can't find fresh organic moringa powder, then you can use just aloe vera leaves. But you would understand that, I want you to understand that if you're using only, only aloe vera leaves, the, um, the efficacy you're going to achieve is quite different from somebody who is using the two um, leaves, the two combination. Then if you can't find aloe vera and you can find moringa, you also fall into the past, into the part that your efficacy will also differ. You understand? So for people suffering from low blood sugar levels, so after 30 minutes after your only water, you take your moringa and aloe vera mixture. Now I would recommend you don't eat anything until one hour later. You could drink water. You could take juices, but anytime you are on this recipe, okay, uh, mashallah beans and is just like, okay, if not available, any aloe vera, wash this, slice it, I'm full of, if not, use my, thank you, sister, I am beans and is just like, and thanks for writing that in the chat box. Now, exactly, yes, please. Also, um, what I'm, what I'm going to say is that if you're using any of these leaves in isolation, either Moringa in, in isolation or mountainous aloe vera in isolation, you understand that the efficacy you are going to use, you are going to get is quite different from somebody who is using them in combination. Now for someone using them in combination, they'll get quicker and faster results. Be evening la. But if you're using them in isolation, it's going to be fast, but it's slow paced compared to using both of them together. We all know how aloe vera has been propagated. I'm um, sorry, Moringa, aloe vera has been propagated, but there was a time there was so much hype on Moringa leaves. Now, some people didn't know how to use Moringa leaves. If you are Moringa leaves for a stretch of time, it tends to bring down the blood um, glucose level very fast. So when you use Moringa leaves too much, you may experience lightheadedness, you may experience anxiety, you may experience um, a drop in, you may experience um, um, anxiousness. And that's because they, there's, a, there's a sudden drop in your blood glucose level. So for you to regulate that drop in your blood glucose level, you need to munch on dates. Some people will say you should use sugar, take a sugary drink so that you bring up your sugar level. I'm not, I don't recommend that, but rather you eat dates. So now if you're on this treatment, do not go beyond three dates because we're also trying to stick to the sauna. So use three dates. You could use Adjua, three Adjua dates. I would recommend you take that. I recommend you take that um, probably as a snacks during the lunch time. Then you can also take banana too. Banana is very, very good in helping to boost your energy levels. While you're on this recipe, you need to be mindful of what you eat and what you don't eat. 
Then lots of water is also very important. This will aid the body's process of detoxing while you're on this recipe. It is very, very important that you take lots of water. But too much of water is also a problem. So I wouldn't want you to go overboard. When you take too much of water, that could be a problem too. So be moderate in your water intake. You could substitute water for juices. You could you, you could do um, probably carrot juice. I love carrot juice. In fact, I did a a challenge, a carrot juice challenge on a pre-Ramadan cleanse. And mashallah, it was so effective that some people lost um, 5 kg, you know, some, um, some healed their skin condition their ulcer so while you're on this recipe you could take carrot juice especially if you are aiming to conceive now so um then the last i've, I've given you three pres um, yeah i give it, i've given you three prescription so the fourth prescription is using this 30 minutes before bed using your blended aloe vera and blended moringa as a mixture taking this before bed be evening la be evening la i am bo by Allah's drama now we want to drink aloe vera Moringa leaves mixture in an, on an empty stomach, but do we want to drink only water? Yes, I would. I also say you should take only water. Moawiya, yes, only water is very good. You have to use it because you know when you drink the aloe vera mixture overnight, when you sleep with that in your tummy, this will cause your blood glucose level to drop down. So since you're in the process of healing, you're not completely ill. You wake up feeling with a low blood sugar level. And people with hormonal imbalance usually um, experience an irregular motion between their blood glucose levels. It can drop and spike at any point in time. It drops and spike. It drops and spike. That is, that's why they have um, mood swings. They have mood problems. So when you are on this recipe, you sleep with aloe vera and um, moringa blended mixture at night. When you wake up, your glucose level may drop depending on your body system. So it is recommended you take only water. So that only water is very, very important when you're on this recipe. Please do not skip the only water. Do not skip the dates. Do not skip the bananas. Do not skip the carrot juice. No, no, no. A pregnant woman cannot take this, please. A pregnant woman should not, should not take this. It could cause abortion or miscarriage so i would not recommend it this is this recipe is for people who are trying to conceive who have them who are on different drugs so a pregnant woman should not use this please it is very very important no pregnant woman should use this for pregnant women there are other types of um and it depends on the level the stage of the trimester you are you are in if you are in your second trimester to the last trimester and the third trimester there are apps that you should take that will help to make your baby very strong which would also help to give the baby a very beautiful skin increase the um the mental function of the baby you know make even the developmental growth of the baby afterwards there are apps to use and i'm not just talking from ESA or just something i read this uh, I've given herbs to women, alhamdulillah, who have used this, and their baby are so much different from those who didn't, who didn't use herb. And they are herbs to also aid fast delivery too. So this recipe is specific is specifically for women who are going through um, inflammatory conditions, women who have infection, if you have fibroid, if you have ovarian cysts, if you have um, cervicals, um, cervical spondylosis no yes yeah, sp cervical spondylosis if you also have lupus yes and while we are only water on an empty stomach when you wake up in the morning i would i would recommend you take this before you brush your teeth before you brush your teeth for women who also have who also experience vaginal dryness you may also use this only water too if you have low libido or low libido is, is actually one of the symptoms of hormonal imbalance. There's no way your, your, your hormones are balanced and you won't have hormonal imbalance. Do you understand? So if you have low libido or low sexual drive, you should also be on this um, recipe too. And, you know, the, um, Mawia, um, someone, Mawia is asking, a doctor said one liter of water for 20 kg. In fact, um, there are so many, there are so many 
Breastfeeding women may use it, but not at a long stretch of time. Uh, women who are breastfeeding shouldn't use it for a long period of time. And you should be watchful of your baby as you are using it. Because invariably, whatever you are taking in, your baby will take it out of your breast milk. I mean, it's actually very good, but it may make the baby, baby purge. So if the baby purges, I would say it's fine. But if it's too much, if the purging, if the pulling is too much, probably after a day, the woman may stop. But it's actually good because this will help to purify the breast milk and make it much more nutritious. Aloe vera is an amazing plant. In fact, that's why it's called a miracle plant. So um, back to the question of um, a doctor saying one liter of water to 20 kg. There are so many research out there. In fact, there are some researches that says that you should drink half of your body's weight in water which is if you weigh about 50 kg, you should drink 25 kg, 25 liters of water. I don't know how that is possible in a day, but maybe some people have done that. While there are so many researches out there, take um, it's, it's um, I think about, um, I usually, I was actually a proponent of taking four liters of water in a day. But I basically come to realize that the body system differs and it depends on how dehydrated you are. If you are really dehydrated, you may need more water than somebody who is not as dehydrated as you. So um, what I would just say is that women need to be in tune to their body system. You need to work with how you feel. Work with your, your body system. You need to understand when things are not going well for you. So women don't even know when they are not okay. They don't even... They they don't, they don't understand their body system at all. They had you, when you ask them questions, they say, hey, I, I'm not sure, I don't know. It's, it's not good. You need to learn to understand the signals your body gives. It's, it's, our body gives us a lot of signals before it actually breaks down. For example, um, persistent headache is also a signal. But I, am, I think this live session is okay for now. If there's no other question, I would like to end this live sh session. Is that all? I'd like to end the live session. I think um, I've answered almost all of the questions. So let's do a recap of basically what we talked about. We talked about the um, effects of stress on the hormones and um, I just soon I just did Suna is seven. I how many days can we take the recipe? Okay, um for the recipe you can take um you can do it for about two months, and that two months that's for those who have who are trying to lose weight, for those suffering from fibroid infection, PCOS, um for PCOS, I would say three months polycystic ovarian disease of polycystic ovarian syndrome. I'll say three months because it takes three months for, for the menstrual cycle to get re regulated, three months. So those of trying to balance their hormones and don't have problems with weight, um, weight, uh, weight loss. You know, there are some people that are trying to gain weight. They are too thin. So uh, if you are too thin and you're on this recipe, it will make you grow thinner. But if you are fat and you're trying to lose weight and you're experiencing hormonal imbalance, PCOS, which is normal, weight gain on inability to lose weight is one of the symptoms of PCOS, then be on this recipe for a minimum of three months. You could go as much as six months. But if you are trying to just treat um, fertility, I would say you should be on this recipe until you conceive. Immediately it is determined that you're pregnant, stop it. Immediately it is determined you're pregnant, or you could be on this recipe until your ovulation, then you stop it. Do we understand? Then um, the actual date, that, that seven, 700 dates is for somebody who wants to protect themselves for um, spiritual issues. You know, the Rasul Sassam says, if you take 700 dates in a, in a day, no harm will come to you, be in a lab. So, but um, for me, I am recommending these dates to keep your blood glucose level on a level on a on a balanced level. Do you understand? So you could do seven hundred dates. You could do um three dates. 
um, three agile dates, or you could even just take normal dates. It doesn't necessarily have to be agile dates because I know for some people, agile dates is not easy to come by. So I don't want it to. I don't want it to be a difficult recipe. And this recipe was developed by me. I, I didn't get it from anywhere. So I made sure it's a recipe that no matter where you are in the world, you can find aloe vera. You can find moringa. If you are in America, if you cannot find the fresh moringa leaves, please go with moringa powder. May Allah help me to make that video. I'm going to make a video using the two types of aloe vera I just mentioned, the leaves and the powder, so that you see how it is and the consistency is going to the consistency is going to that going that's going to come out. So if in the absence of um, is there any other questions? Do we have any other question? I would like to end this live session. Now, Subhanak Allahumma bi'amdik, ashada la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.